In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Happy Feast of the Holy Cross. The Church is always encouraging us with very beautiful readings to tell us, do you know the meaning of this great occasion or not? So we read today in the psalm, if you can open the psalm for us, please. Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. What is the meaning of the countenance of your light, of the light of your countenance? St. Jerome is the one who translated the Old Testament from Hebrew into Latin. He was amazed. What does it mean, the face of the Lord, or the countenance of the Lord? Then he made it as it is. And we say it, by the way, in each and every liturgy. Enobion so kiria, does this mean? Before you, O Lord. Enobion to Theo, before you, O God. And then when we think of it, why and how it means, or what is the meaning of being in the countenance of God? Many scholars tried to give a definition and to connect this event with the greatest hope we had through the cross and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then they found out three simple definitions. They said, to be in obion so kiri, before O you Lord, it means everything you do in your life is under the authority of God. Second thing, you do it in the presence of God. And the third thing is, you do it for the glory of God. Then you are enjoying the full power of the cross. Let me ask myself and ask you this evening. Is every single, you do, single thing you do at home, in the church, in your service, under the authority of God? Or this is my opinion? I want to impose my ideas on you, peacefully, joyfully, by force, by any means. And I'm saying, Enobion so kiri, or before you, O Lord. Is it in the presence of God? Do I have the fear of God that now I'm enjoying the fullness of the newness of life? Why I enjoy the cross and his resurrection as well. The church, carefully, our forefather chose these readings to be in the vespers of the feast of the cross to tell us, remind yourself, examine yourself. Are you doing everything under the authority of God? and in the presence of God, and finally, why? It is for the glory of God. Then you can easily say, as the psalm was telling us, you have put gladness in my heart for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. From where you got this safety? From the power of his cross and the power of resurrection. Then the gospel was telling us, I know it. I know that he did it for me. I know that it is inobion so kiri. I am in the presence of God. I'm trying to work everything under the authority of God and for the glory of God and in the presence of God. Then the Lord was not shocking us, but waking us up. In verse 30, it says, as he spoke these words, we know what does it, what does it mean to be in the presence of God or the light of his countenance. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Great. They already believed in him. So what is missing? Why they are still hesitant to follow him? And more than that, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I know the truth, but I am not free yet. Where is the power of the cross? Where is the power of the resurrection? Where is the glory of his name? Because I know when the deacon is saying, Enobion so I am in his presence. Then comes verse 31 to tell us there's something missing. It's not the story of the cross, it is the revelation of the cross. So it's not the story of the cross, it is abiding in the power of the cross through the word of God. Verse 31, 30, they believed. Then it's finished, not finished. 32, they, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. 31, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, it's not only to believe. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Then, and you shall know the truth, 
and the truth shall make you free. Did you read your, the word of God today? It's never too late. Go now and read it. Enjoy the fullness of being under the light of his countenance. To enjoy the fullness of the power of his cross, the fullness of the power of his resurrection. Yes, you believed, but unfortunately the story still remains a story in your life. He wants to convert every story in my life, in your life, into a personal revelation. One of the names of the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, he is the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowing him. Let us pray in these three days of the Feast of the Cross. We know the cross. We sing many songs, many hymns in English, in Coptic, in Arabic to the cross, but we need to enjoy the fullness of the power of his cross. He is opening his arms of the cross to welcome whoever he is. Whatever your past, whatever your circumstances now is welcome you, welcoming you and me. To tell us it's time to enjoy doing everything under his authority, in his presence, and for his glory, and will glorify his name and the cross that through him and through the cross we receive this great salvation and enjoy the fullness of the power of resurrection. May the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>